<clears throat> this is so weird. Um, so I decided that I'm going to do this episode of the show um, with my webcam because, um, well, I just didn't feel like setting up everything, especially because I don't really know how this is going to go. I'm just going to talk aimlessly. Um, I just wanted it to be simple and not want to be high budget. I'll be also eating this Omo Raisin Cookie from Firehouse Subs. <laughs> um, so it'll be kind of like a, a ghetto mukbang. So, yay! So I shaved today. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm glad I did because I was starting to feel old and I kind of remembered who I was. Like, I am a young bitch. I am not a old bitch. Um, age is really interesting because our whole lives, like as kids, like we hear like 30 and we're like, oh my god, that's like when you're an adult. And I really bought into that narrative. I really was like, okay, I'm, I'm 29, about to be 30 at the end of the year. And um, I'm old. And I even was like, at one point, I really was following this like industry thing of like lying about your age if you haven't made it yet. Um, <laughs> Then I realized I'm a terrible liar because I can't remember what I say. <laughs> That's why I'm sticking to being honest now, especially after my breakup with my ex. Like that moment, man. Um, I am not a player. I'm not a. Li I'm not a. I lied about one thing, but that was also a really weird relationship because it moved too fast. And no one can demand total trust of somebody um, overnight, you know what I mean? But anyways, lesson learned. And now I'm here. So this week is June 4th at 10.20 p.m. in Los Angeles City. And this week, it was like... The Monday I've been waiting for for the past five months, I wake up on Monday morning to a text saying, are you free to work? Yes. From like my boss, my casting director boss, Paul Brickman, Paul Brickman Creative. And he's like, actually, um, would you, is it be okay if I just gave your number to like my, my friend who needs some help, the casting director? And I said, sure. So that's. And immediately, she was like, are you free? When can you start? Yeah. And I started working that day into the rest of the week. Um, I get an email from Innovative Artists who's saying, are you free to interview for this department? I'm like, yes, of course. But in reality, I was like, do I want to work in that department? Like, my experience is fashion, commercial, and TV, film, theater. Primarily TV and commercial, right? Fashion. So, the department they wanted me for which this agent, amazing guy, really nice. I truly vibe with him. And it's also I don't have communication because I feel like I can learn a lot from him. But we interview him, he sells me the job. I'm like, yeah, I just need some time. Um, he's trying to quickly follow up with me after the interview and was like, how'd it go, tell me more. I told her, and she's like, well, he loved you and he wants to offer you the position. And I'm like, great, but I, um, I have another interview that I really am looking forward to on Tuesday. Can I get until then, in a day, to make a decision? And she says, no, unfortunately, we need to know by tomorrow morning. And I'm like, okay, I'll call you tomorrow morning. So 
I already knew then and there. I was going to turn it down. Big mistake. I will at some point regret this decision because that's a hard thing to turn down. But there was so much to it that just it 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 showed me that it wasn't the right decision because I think that I'm in this situation to realize what I actually want for my life because I lost my path. I lost my vision. I lost my dreams. I, I, did, I just been living aimlessly and I kind of only put like the one thing I knew for sure for the last three years is that I want to travel. I want to live outside of the country. Like that's that's been a constant. Even when I was there during the mess in December, I was happy to be there. Um, but I knew that it was ruining the experience because I was going through so much. Excuse me. But I'm up for this. Well, I'm interviewing for a job on Tuesday. And this job is ideal. It's literally will make everything that I want for my life to become possible and get me out of the situation although I am very blessed and I'm very thankful for the support and help I've been getting from my friends like Angie you're amazing um it's it's actually surreal to think about how much people are willing to do for you when you're in your time of need like It like, makes me so happy, like, only because it's like, damn, like, people love me. Like, people really actually do care about me. And I can never, ever say that no one cares about me. And it, like, honestly changed how I feel about life in general because I've been, I suffer from depression and major, mostly anxiety. And when well, I got a text. She's wrote my testimonial, and I'm excited to see it. Um, but yeah, it kind of like took me out of my whatever self-loathing that I've had to realize that there's so many people who are banding together to make my life possible. Like that's like fucking phenomenal, and I can never ever be so selfish to think of ever self-harming myself or doing anything that's stupid. Um, so that shifted a lot in my my mind and saturn return like what the fuck is the saturn return like all of my fears have had to be confronted and still are being confronted i my my mental demons are vanishing like like i really do feel like after this phase of life i'm going to be unstoppable because all the inner work sorry is being done and that's amazing amazing like sure it's hell Saturn's making sure of it but I guess I found a loophole to get through it because I've been very vocal about how tormented I felt but I haven't stopped working like I haven't stopped doing those work that I need to do like I might say some things, I might threat, I might kick and scream and whine, but I still move forward each day. And I didn't realize how much, <laughs> like, just by doing that, you're doing the work. You know what I mean? Like, it, it is progress, it is healing, because I'm addressing everything I need to address. Um, even if I'm banging my head against the wall, I'm still, like, looking within trying to be mindful, trying to make sure I also don't take everything for granted because I am thankful and I do show my gratitude um, for my situation, you know, because it could be a lot worse. It, again, it's not ideal, but in this time where a lot of people are, people are dying, you know what I mean? Like, I'm very fortunate and I'm thankful. 
foam. I sent the email yesterday, rejecting the job. After receiving the call twice. Um, and immediately I was like, oh fuck. Like, how do you turn down, like, not like a boutique agency? Like, this is like celebrities rep are rep by them. Like, this is a big deal. And I don't know what my next opportunity really is. Like, of course, I'm like hoping and manifesting for this other job because I really, 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 really want it. But <laughs> I really, really want it. Like, I, I want this job so bad. But this is life. Um, and at the same time, I'm also doing other things outside of like looking for like a day job. Um, this is really about me coming up with a plan because I've lacked a plan for so long. Like, it's really important to have a plan in life to really just know what you want. And I think that I allowed myself to not go for what I wanted for so long, like out of fear, out of insecurities, um, lack of support or feeling like I've had some kind of affirmation from other people to affirm what I was doing. Um, and now I'm realizing, like, we're running out of time. Like, life is short. I can't be bothered thinking about, like, what am I going to do with my life and the thoughts of other people on that? Like, if I want... if First of all, the worst has already happened. There's no... There's nothing... There's not much left after this. Like, if, if I don't get this job that will save my life or marry this rich man who doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> no, he exists. My wealthy husband's out there. Um, European. Um, <laughs> if you don't know, I have this, like, inside joke about how I'm going to marry wealthy to a European man to gain dual citizenship and live a happy life. <laughs> um, and I almost had that in December, but... I fucked it up, but it's okay. The T board receives this. Sorry. Um anyways. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Um yeah, I I'm just getting to the point of giving no fucks. And I think that I played by my own infrastructural rules of like, I can't do this because I'm this or I'm afraid of doing that because of that. Like, now it's, 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 it's demon time. And <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm trying to be trendy and hip. Uh, it's demon time. No, it's, it's literally like, this is, I have nothing left, I have nothing left to lose. My life has played out in the last decade exactly what I did not want to ever happen. Everything that I've been afraid of, everything that I've been trying my, so hard to avoid, to self undo, has manifested as my reality and there's nothing else i can do like there's like like there's no thing nothing i'm afraid of now there's nothing i can try to prevent like honestly moving forward is the only thing i can do but also with that if i want to do it i want to do it in a way that i enjoy doing it like i don't want to be like oh i have to go and do this job because i'm afraid like I'm I'm living in a less than ideal situation like right now like oh, there again thankful it's great I'm blessed but at my age with what again having these ideals that I set for myself this is not what I've wanted or anticipated for my life so what am I going to do about it go for what I want <laughs> like there's there's nothing else like my parents they still love and support me at this stage in my life um i can't do anything else to disappoint them like i already have if i if that if that was a thing like i already have like there's nothing no more disappointment i can ever give them because they were at this point i said to me for whatever the fuck i am like my friends too i have some really great quality friends and my life has been nothing short of 
chaos, maybe organized chaos, but chaos. And they love me regardless. And they're there for me through it. So it's like, huh, all the borders are broken. Like, now it's just time to just play this game how I see fit and see what comes out of it and just try to avoid making further mistakes. But we're human. I'm human. A spiritual being of a human experience. But human. I'm in when within the vestibule I have the same bodily constraints as every other person. Um although I am able bodied and I am grateful for that. But there is um at some point in life you just gotta get over yourself. You know? Like you just really have to say, damn, I might have been taking this thing too seriously. Like I, I started limiting myself. I remember when I was married, um, <laughs> when I was married, I, my first marriage, I said, I just remember, like, I need to find a job because, like, I hated my job at the time. I was only making, like, $9 an hour. And, <laughs> no, it was $10 an hour. But still, like, that sounds like shit. Um, but back then, that sounded like a good thing. Damn, look at how much has changed in only, like, 10 years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, um, <clears throat> yeah, um, I wasn't making that much money, and I remember him being like, why don't you apply to, like, these luxury stores, and you apply to be a manager, your experience, you can do this. Like, this man who literally had no personality, like, love him, sweet soul, I cared about him, but this man... I wish I could have seen reality, like, really see reality, because I'm like, the fact that he was telling me, no, you are better than this. Go out and do, go out and get a better job. Like, why don't you just, you can do it. You're more, you're more than enough. Like, this man who had no emotion was telling me, you can do this. And then I'm sitting here like, no, I can't do that because they don't want to hire me. I can tell they don't want to hire me because I'm black. But, you know, like, I'm seeing all of these things that have been placed on me and obviously through reality we try to navigate reality like i'm trying to avoid pitfalls that others may have fallen into um and it's a lot of self undoing which is 12th house i mean my 12th house had a return very much a 12th house thing i constantly self undo myself to avoid certain traumas or pitfalls or mistakes because i'm so deathly afraid of ending up like that guy or that person you know like it's always been like this like narrative in my mind of like I don't want to end up like one of my teachers I don't want to say which one because <laughs> I don't want to end up like that person because I can't be that age single like I create these like things of being afraid of being that person I didn't want to be fully out as gay because I didn't want to be perceived as that person or I don't want to go and do this because this will end up you know happening and guess what Every single thing that I was afraid of happening has happened. Like, I was on the path of becoming that guy who was going to be 40 and alone. I was on the path of being whatever these things I was afraid of. Um, like, I didn't want to be 30 and um, I really even face unemployment. Like, you know, like, but I've been unemployed almost every year for the last, like, and, like, it's not necessarily consecutive, but it's, like, off and on, like, I've been going through jobs. Um, and not necessarily at my own fault, but I do believe there is a certain responsibility that needs to be, um... I need to take a hold of is because I allow myself to take jobs I didn't necessarily want. I've also chose to accept less. And that's on me because I have, I should have a self-worth that I've now gained <laughs> so late. <laughs> well, I feel it's so late in my life um, because it wasn't that hard besides going through it so many times for me to finally stand up and be like, mm, I deserve better. And also, everyone, I'm at a point that my reality is so, I've pushed the, the envelope so far that everyone in my life is like, you're better than this. Stop. Like, I think when when the algorithm in reality starts to, like, make the, your supporting characters turn around and yell at you that you're better than something, means you've gotten so far <laughs> that you can't even, you've shown the infrastructure that you can't do it yourself, that it needs to add in a handicap and be like, yo... 
fix it. You're doing it wrong, wrong. Like all the bleak, like, like <laughs> it's like in Mario Kart for iOS. Like when you have the handicaps on, it kind of like re guides you and re-steers you. Like that's really what was happening. And thank you, Daddy Saturn, for, like, guiding me and giving me everything there to, like, help me. I have the tools to, like, stay on my path uh, or redirect myself back onto my path to then also realize who the fuck I am. Because for some moment there, I forgot who I was. And it wasn't until I was at my worst that I, I just remember that night when I got the worst things in my life. And I was, like... This is this gives me all the ammunition to want to kill myself. Like, I literally had every reason to commit suicide. Like, I don't even know how I didn't. Like, something broke, but I think the right thing broke within myself. I, <laughs> it was 2.30 a.m. I get the news. And obviously, like, I, I think it was frozen. And I started to laugh a little bit because it was just like, no, this isn't supposed to happen. Like, this is a joke. Like, this has to be a joke. Like, because I did everything right, and the worst things still happen, or I thought was right. Um, a blessing in disguise, <laughs> in a weird way, because it was an incident, and I was like, I still have a lot of time left, <laughs> and I gotta live with this realization. So what am I gonna do? And then I started to like tell everyone around me, and then everyone came towards me and was like, "Nope, this is this is this is nothing. Like this is this is nothing. Like we're we're moving forward. Like no one allowed me to even feel sorry for myself. Like I've had some down moments probably with it, but like, and rightfully so because I'm human and it hurts. But like everyone really was like, what we're not gonna do is other you make you feel less than right now we're going to help you realize what we see so that way you can keep yourself up here and not allow yourself to drown because that's what that was that was the only other thing that could happen and god i'm blessed because that it's been a whirlwind the past few years um but that definitely solidified something within myself like a certain strength that I just never had in my teen years going into my adulthood um and honestly looking at some of the alternatives of how my how I thought my life could go um besides the right way that I've decided um this is perfect like everything it's been a very jagged chaotic path a organized chaotic path um, like, even last year, I lost a dream job. Like, not my dream, but I lost a dream job. It's still on my resume, so it's kind of great because I got the experience. Um, it's helped me be where I'm at today and be able to, like, be in the company that I am in. in. But <laughs> it's, like, funny when you think, if I get this or this happens, then they'll solve all my problems. And then you realize you're in a worse situation mentally than you were in before and again Saturn returned so I think a lot of this had to come bubble up to the point that it was at for me to then decide what I decided and then go through the trials that I went through to then land where I would not have chosen to be but I think I needed to be and I think I, I think that the fact that it happened the way it did happen is fact of it needed to be this way um, I needed to be here at this time because there was a time in the past, past when I wanted to be here um, and the universe was not letting it happen. So I'm learning as a person born under a lunar eclipse that my way is not always the right way. And I need to trust the process. <laughs> Because I'm still a work in progress, and there's so much to gain from all of these experiences, all of these challenges. Um, I'm truly so thankful that I've been given um, at least a mind frame to be able to accept and understand astrology. 
but it really has helped me get to this point where and I'm not only like using it for myself in fact sometimes I can't because I born under a lunar eclipse so I can't really understand my life and see and interpret the way that I need to because you know for yourself there's always going to be the ego being there but when I read for someone else I'm able to like detach myself from it um but <laughs> Like, even me thinking about next week for this interview. Like, this interview, I have no, like, I have nothing to help secure this besides the interview process itself. And that terrifies me because I've literally had so much to help me get the job at Innovative. Like, I've had names on my resume that people knew, so that gave me more of, like, credibility. Um the hr lady loved me like allison she's lovely um we interviewed very well and she was just like kind of putting me at the top of the list for every interview and every department um that had vacancies and i mean it just sucks that it had to be this way like ah but also like what the fuck is my life like who gets the who gets the turn down <laughs> Like, okay, so Innovative Agency, if you don't know, Raptors out there, I'm pretty sure you know, they're one of the top 15 agencies in the country. Um, I remember back in my day, they were, like, the top. Uh, I think, like, third from CAA. Um, but over the years, certain people, like, became named, and all the agencies kind of, like, go in different orders. Well, and I'm Duty Pro. They're one of the top 16. And it's just, like... Like, teenage me is screaming, like, this is what I wanted. But I also hate that, like, now I want something else. Now I want to be abroad. I want to, I want to go to Europe and, well, I want to, I want to, like, travel along all of my astrophotography lines, document the experience, test it out also so I can get the quality of life that I want but also the quality of life that I want. I'm, I'm a vagrant. I'm a vagabond. I like to travel. Um, I can't be in one place for too long. I want to meet the love of my life and, like, get the chance of, like, experiencing that because I know that person isn't from my country. So, like, I know I have to be out there. I've met so many wonderful souls already, like, traveling. Some of my best friends live overseas. Like, I want to be able to, like, see them whenever I want to. Like, travel, like, here to there, here to there. I love being on the plane, like, going to do that. I feel like I'm living. Like, for me, that's the excitement I get. I get the adrenaline feel of, like, from just traveling. Then, also, I'm received well in other places. It's, a, it's the craziest thing. Like, in the U.S., I'm, I'm, I hate it here. <laughs> um... For me, for whatever reason, I feel alien. Um, always, it's always been like that, it's my whole life. Um, I think I got to the point that I kind of realized, yeah, in 2019 when I went to abroad for the first time, and I got to really feel and see, whoa, like, people are like, I felt like a human for the first time. Like, I walked into a party. It was a house party. My friends were writing about me um, to everyone. And then everyone wanted to meet me. They knew my name already. It wasn't weird. It was, like, a gen Like, what I expect and how I give other people when they come to, like, parties with my friends. Like, it's a warmth. It's not like a, hmm, okay. Like, and leave you alone. These people are genuinely like, oh, yeah, tell me about you. Like, oh, my God, yeah, wow. Oh, my God, you work in Hollywood? Like, it was really strong interest and not for fake reasons it was like genuine human interest and i love that i was just like damn like these are some cool people and i love that being outside the u.s there's a it breaks up the capitalistic like what do you do what can you do for me you know that whole thing and i'm just over 
the need that everyone needs to feel that they need to be proven something for someone else and also having to prove themselves to other people. Like, we're human. Like, sure, you can see my potential, you can see what I'm worth, or you can realize I'm a fucking human being that shits too, you know? Like, I'm not magic. <laughs> like, yeah, I have things I can offer you, but, like, that isn't free. <laughs> like... Um, I choose to help people that I choose to help, and people who choose to help me will choose to help me, but, like, don't let my skin color just hurry you from, like, seeing the value of me as a human being. Like, I don't know, it's just, there's so many experiences I've had that, like, really just, like, ruined it, where, like, I remember, even with my ex-husband, it was, like, a very, that was, like, the most, like, eye-opening experience for me, was when we would go to, what do you call it, um, nightlife events in New York City, and we'll walk in, in like the clear, like distinct difference between how he was treated. And the funny thing is, like as a actual person now, and I'm not trying to shit on him. Anyone who knows my husband, husband, like they all know, pretty exterior, hollow inside. Like the only person he's ever shown his like personality and cares who was like me, and that was only because we were together. And everyone would be like. I just remember, like, when he met my mom, like, it was so awkward. Like, my mom was being so warm, and he was a total bitch to her. Um, why he's an ex. But it was a... It was just, like, an eye-opening thing to see. They walk into, like, a club. Everyone will come crowding him. And they'll be like, oh, my God. You know, like, trying to, like, seduce him and, like, get his attention. And he's just over here, like, yawning. Like, like he's not paying any attention to any of these people and i'll just be like trying to like i remember this one photographer because we only came that night because my friend was going to introduce us to a photographer so we can get him to shoot more people to have a diverse portfolio for his modeling um he was a model and we go and the guy pulls him away from me to go talk privately and then he's like no my husband has to come he's my my manager and I'm acting manager so I'm just like yeah because I know the industry and he doesn't like rightfully so so the guy was like oh okay yeah you can come too but he's like thinking like the fuck is this kid knows you know he always uses the black kid and he's just like automatically judged me he was being super rude until we sit down and then he's like well you know for me it's a lot to like take out my time to help you so if you can help me, I'll help you. And then I like, was being like, what do you mean? Like, okay, what do you what do you want? And he was ready to like try to like set up this thing up because he's like, yeah, he's French, you know, like scratch your back and scratch my back. I'm like, so what are you looking for? And he's like, oh, no, I just, I just meant like, you know, I just need to know that, like, you'll return the favor when, when the time comes. And I'm like, yeah, what do you want? Like, how much money are you asking? And he's like, oh, no, not money. No. And then my sister was like, sex? And he's like, oh, no. Um, actually, there were some clothes I wanted. Which makes no sense because neither of us were designers and we had no access to, like, whatever clothes he was trying to ask for. And she ended up not happening. But just that, that act of disrespect that was happening in front of me, like, there was that. There was this one guy who, like, was flirting with him at the table and, like, kept ignoring me. And, like, he was just, like, not acknowledging the fact that I existed. And was just, like, flirting hardcore in front of me. And I'm just, like, um, that's my husband. And then the guy was, like, how did you get him? That's not, that's not even the worst time I've been, like, disrespected. But anyways, yeah. That was that was just, like, an eye-opening experience to, like, realize, like, how people really are, especially in this country. Because I've only seen it here. Like, I've been... I've been to many countries. Never have seen that happen anywhere else. Not saying it doesn't happen in other places, but, like, that's not been my reality in other places. But here, it most certainly has. Um, like, 
even when I was working service jobs. <laughs> a lot. But anyways, I'm going to put it in here because this is where I'm at in life. Right now, I'm having an interview on Tuesday. Um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. Also, if... I'll put this out there. Um, actually, I'm not going to do that yet. No, no. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what next week's bringing. And yeah, I'm going to keep doing these little raw, straight through, no cuts, no edits um, videos. Or maybe I should edit it. I don't know. And this pimple is killing me. What the fuck? I haven't drank as much water this week as I should have. Anyways. <sighs>